Um, I want you to open your Bible up to Matthew chapter 13. Praise God. Um, upon coming back from KAA, um, God really stirred up my heart about the seed that we were spreading. Because as I said last week, many of our students, they have the word of God in them. Amen. They have the word of God. And so wherever we go, we are to be spreaders, spreaders of that word. Amen. Um, as the spring was coming up, I had some patches in my yard and they needed grass. And, you know, so I just got a bag of seed, okay, grass seed, all right? And what I did was I took that grass seed and I just started spreading it in those holes. Now, I should have known better not to just spread it because not everything took root. I spread the seed and I expected, just like the package said, in five weeks, there would be some growth. But I noticed that in some areas, there was no growth. Thank you. I noticed in some areas, it didn't take hold. And God began to really speak to me that many times we are the same way. The seed of the word can be preached and it not necessarily take hold. We can send these kids to KAA and not everybody receive the same thing. Some of you will hear the word today and it may take some time for it to take root. But we're praying that everybody catch hold of it today. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all know I can't shout and yell, so I'm going to need y'all to do it for me. Praise the Lord. All right, so here we go. We're going to start at verse 19, verse 18. Praise the Lord. The scripture reads, Listen then to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one sown with seed beside the road. The one sown with seed on the rocky places, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution occurs because of the word, immediately he falls away. And the one sown with seed among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word and the anxiety of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But the one sown with seed on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some sixty, some 30 times as much. Let us pray. Father, we want to say thank you for this time. Father, I thank you that the word is going to go forth. I thank you, Lord God, for it taking root in your people today. Now, Father, I ask for your grace and your anointing to continue to flow in me. I surrender to you in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. So if you know anything about this story, the disciples and the crowds around Jesus were having a time together about the gospel. Okay? And Jesus is preaching the gospel, and he begins to tell this parable. And he tells this parable... And it's so, like, confusing to people because people weren't sure what it meant. There was seed that was cast. Some seed fell on rocky ground. Some seed fell on shallow ground. Some seed fell amongst the thorns. And some seed fell on good ground. I want to title this message today, Good Soil Disciples. 
I hope you heard me. Good soil disciples. You see, I want to be a good soil disciple. Because what it said in verse 23 is that those that receive the word, it was received in good soil. So there's many times we can come to church or we can sit and read and we actually don't receive. Help me somebody. There are many times that we can hear the word, we can read the word, but we actually don't receive it. Maybe we're in a rush. Maybe it was just a check on the agenda. Let me get that scripture in real quick. But just because we checked it off doesn't mean we received it. See, I threw the seed on the ground, but it didn't take root. The ground didn't receive it. I'm sure if the ground could talk, it'd be like, dude, you need to come here and tell this. Because I just threw the seed. You know, some, I just did it haphazardly. You know, just... And sometimes we treat the word of God haphazardly. Where we just wake up and say, oh, let me get it in. With no intention of letting it being worked into the soil. If you're going to have a good seed, if you're going to have a good crop, that seed must be worked into the soil. Everybody take your hand and go like this. See, there's a little tool that I use, okay? A little pick, and I have to dig into the soil, okay? If I don't do that, I notice that that seed is going to be on shallow ground. And if the seed is on shallow ground, it's going to get dried up. How many times have we read a good word, but because too much stuff was going on in our personal life, that word got dried up? It was a powerful word at 6 in the morning, but by that work meeting at 9 a.m., by the time I made it to lunch, by the time 3 o'clock came around, got to pick up the kids, that word didn't left me. <laughs> it got dried up. But we have to be intentional and saying, I want to be good soil. We have to be intentional that as I get into that word, God, let it dig in me. Let that word dig in me. As we look into this passage, verse 23. Verse 23 says, but the one sown with seed on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. Hears the word and understands it. I was looking at these words in the Greek. And when I looked at these words for hear, the word for hear is the root word of acoustics. Okay? Sometimes you can walk into a hallway or a bathroom or a garage <clears throat> and you begin to shout out and it's like, man, this place has good acoustics. And you're listening to the sound coming back. Okay? And so, Marcos, where are you? Can you turn me up just a little bit more? Yes, sir. Because I feel the stress. That's why I'm saying it. Yeah. So listen. When I'm listening for something, I'm listening for the acoustics, how the room handles sound. That, way, that means I have to intently listen. So some of you today are in an intent place. And I think that's probably why I'm like this. Because God wants you to hear. Because I have to listen with intention. Okay? So it's not just a haphazard reading of the word of God. I actually have to listen. Because the word says, what was on good soil was heard and understood. My God. Sometimes we can be in a place where we will hear it but we actually didn't discern what it was. If something pops off out here, some of you might be like, oh, what sound was that? 
Some of you would say, oh, that was a firecracker. Some of you would say, oh, no, that was gunshots. But you're discerning what you heard. And when it comes to the word of God, we have to be people that are ready to hear. Touch your neighbor and say, are you ready to hear? I know y'all couldn't touch, but that's okay. Are you ready to hear? That means every day when I wake up, God, I need to hear what you're saying. Every day that I arise, God, help me to hear. These little devotionals that we get, I want to know, God, what are you saying in this word? Some of you get the verse for the day. When you get that verse for the day, ask God to help it marinate in me. Some of y'all cook some good fish and you add that good seasoning on there. Okay? And then you let it sit in the refrigerator for about four hours. See, some of y'all got happy already. Because you know what time will do. Time will cause that thing to receive. It'll receive all the seasoning. It'll receive the salt. It'll receive the garlic. It'll receive the parsley. It'll receive all that needs to go into that meat. And when it comes with the word of God, we cannot rush. When it comes to the word of God, we got to let that thing marinate. Some of you might have goals that said, I want to read a whole chapter. And God is like, no, I want to speak to you in the first verse. There have been times that I've read the word of God and I could not get past one verse. Because that verse was speaking to me. I had to sit with it. I couldn't move on. Maybe I'll get to the rest of the chapter later, but God was speaking in that one verse. And in that verse, I began to receive. I began to receive. What am I receiving? I'm receiving understanding. That's the next thing. Hearing and understanding. Daniel, when he was praying, and all this revelation was coming to him. He said he heard it, but he did not understand it. He said it was too much. It was overwhelming. He heard it, but he didn't understand it. So there's a way for us to hear the word of God, but not fully understand. And it requires us to really seek out the Holy Spirit whenever we're reading something. Ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. Especially if you've heard it. I hear it, God, but I need to understand. I hear what you're saying, but help me to put it all together. See, in the Greek, for the word understanding, it means to start putting the parts together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hear the word now help me put it all together sometimes we're trying to work things out in our own lives and God says you haven't got the understanding yet you got to get the understanding when you get the understanding you'll be able to put the pieces together some of you have been through so many hurts and you're just like God I, I don't know how to work this thing out and he says, let me show you in the word. Let me give you understanding. Because then you'll be able to put all the pieces together. Hallelujah. You'll be able to put all the pieces together. He hears the word and he understands it. And the person that understands it, this person indeed bears fruit. I love this part about bears fruit, okay? Because that means if I've received it and I've now been able to put the parts together, now that thing is about to grow. So you all know about these petals that fall in the spring. It is messy. Uh, the, 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 what do they call it? Propellers? 
Th those things get on my nerves. They're all over the yard, all over my car. And I don't know, somebody was doing some fertilizing because my tree did not yield this much fruit last year. So something was going on because I got all this stuff all over my yard. Now, mind you, it's, it's, it's hard to clean up. You got to get your blower. You got to blow all the stuff. But I messed up and did not blow it out of my flower beds. Okay? I didn't realize that these little papellas are seeds. So weeks go by. Some of these seeds have taken root. And so now almost every day I'm outside up to this day pulling out these weeds because it's going to do what it's supposed to do. The tree was bearing fruit and those seeds fell. Those seeds spread all over my yard. God spoke to me. That's how we're supposed to be. In our walk with Christ, we're to receive the seed, we're to bear fruit, and that fruit is then supposed to spread everywhere. What I, when I watched what happened with the seed, when that seed fell into the ground, it began to spread and it began to shift things. And God spoke to me. He said, if you're going to be a disciple of good soil, you got to learn to shift your life. You're going to have to learn how to shift your life because good soil disciples, they are not going to remain the same. See, those propellers, they altered my flower bed. So now I've got flowers and then I've got these green things. It created a shift. Now, it's not a shift that I like because it's not pretty. However, God says, if you're going to receive my seed, you've got to be ready to make some shifts in your life. Because his seed is life. And the life that's in the seed is going to start pushing some things out the way. And for some of us, some of us, the reason why we don't, we're not ready is because we're not ready to let go. The seed is falling. The seed is being given. But because of some of the things we're not ready to let go, it cannot take root. That seed's going to come down. That seed's going to come. And it wants to spread. It wants to do its job. Ricky, come in. Jam, come in. Stand right there. You stand right there. Face me. Okay. The seed comes into the ground and, and it wants to spread. I'm, I promise you I'm not going to hurt you. Okay. But it wants to spread. And when that seed begins to spread, it's going to start moving some stuff. Okay? It's going to start moving your indifference. It's going to start moving your lack of faith. It's going to start moving things. But it's only in that place if I'm ready to receive what the seed wants to do. Stay there. Because we actually can resist the seed. Face me. Face me. And you got to hold your core tight. Okay? All right. Hold your core tight. All right. All right. So, dang, Ricky. Come here. A little strong boy. So, we actually can resist the seed, okay, with our stubbornness. Okay, Alma talked about it. We have this stubbornness that's going on that we want to do what we want to do. And there can be no fruit because we want our way. That flesh gets in the way. And because of that flesh getting in the way, 
there can be no fruit born. But see, somebody that says, I want to be a good disciple in good soil, you'll be able to say, Father, I surrender. I want you to throw up your hands. Throw up your hands. Throw up your hands. Face me. And throw up your hands. And so this place of surrender says, I let go. I let go. And when I'm able to let go, now that seed is going to start moving. And that seed is going to start moving through. And it's going to impact every area of your life. And it's a daily planting that happens. A daily planting. Clap for these boys. Hey, thank you for that. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to turn to uh, John chapter 4. Pastor Jason was talking about the woman at the well. This woman at the well, she was tired. She was hopeless. He spoke about her and what happened to her. She had an encounter with the seed. And her encounter with the seed caused her to make a shift in her life. Because her normal routine was to just come and get the water. But there was a shift. She dropped everything and she went to spread the seed some more. She dropped all of her stuff because nothing else mattered. And she went and spread it some more. Sometimes I wonder about us in the body of Christ why we have such a hard time sharing the gospel. It should not be hard for somebody that's had an encounter with Jesus. If you've had an encounter with the seed, you're going to want to tell somebody. Hear what I'm saying. This woman has met the Messiah, the one they've been waiting for. She had no idea that he was standing right in front of her. It was the most amazing thing. Could this man be the Messiah? Everything shifted in her. She changed because she was so excited. This is him. Life shifted. Meaning, I can no longer do the same things. There's a shift. If Jesus, if I've encountered Jesus, there is a shift in my life. If you're still operating in the same way, I wonder if you've had an encounter with Jesus. Because an encounter with Jesus causes a life to shift. Hallelujah. When you made that post, because I saw that post too. Praise the Lord. There was a life shift. I don't do it anymore. Because of my encounter with Jesus, there was a life shift. Anybody that receives the word, there's going to be a life shift shift. I've got to make some decisions. What am I willing to lay down so that the seed can grow? I'm telling you, all of us came back from KAA with some goals. Okay? There was a seed that was received. But are you going to be good soil for that seed to grow? We cannot come back and after a week, get into the same routines that we were in before we left. You hear what I'm saying? If there was a God encounter, that means there's been a shift in our lives. You hear what I'm saying? I love stick shifts. I wish I had one. And I love being able to shift it. When God comes in, there is going to be a shift to another 
level. I don't want to remain the same. When I look at my plant and it's not growing like it's supposed to, I'm just like, something got to be done. We ought to got to get some more fertilizer or we just got to get rid of you. Because there's supposed to be growth. In the disciples of Jesus Christ, there is supposed to be growth. In the disciples of Jesus Christ, there should be a shifting all the time. And not a shifting backwards. This is always moving forward. Always moving forward. Too many stale Christians around these parts. We should be ever moving, ever growing. God has called us to a shift. Somebody say, God, you've called me to a shift. Help me, oh God. I need to shift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to Ephesians 4, verse 17. Ephesians 4, starting at verse 17. It says here, So I say this and affirm in the Lord that you are to no longer walk just as the Gentiles also walk in the fertility of their minds, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their hearts. And they, having become callous, have given themselves up to indecent behavior for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. So this is what, this is what people look like that are not saved. All types of illicit behavior, all types of greediness, all types of things going on. But look what it says. This is verse 20. But you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourself of the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. And that you are to be renewed in the spirits of your minds. If you don't have it underlined, please underline it. He said, those that heard and understood, you have rid yourself of your old self. You've rid yourself of your old self. So therefore, you don't even look like you used to. If, if some of my friends were to come in here from my past, they would be like, I don't even recognize you. Because you don't look like what we knew you to be. Something happened in your life that made a change. Something happened in your life to make you look new. There's got to be a change going on. There's got to be a shift. When we are a person that bears fruit, the, the uh, definition for bearing fruit is to be fertile. Praise the Lord. I want to be fertile. Now, I know that sounds weird, but I want to be fertile because if I can be fertile in the spirit, that means I'm going to be ready to bear fruit in every season. You hear me? So I have this other tree. This year, it gave us blueberries. Did you know that? It gave us some dark berries. I'm not going to say they were blueberries that you could eat, but they were dark berries. I did not see those dark berries last year. And I was like, wow, this is really bizarre. How is it that last year you didn't give me berries, but now this year you gave me berries? Somebody was fertile. How is it that you were not nice last year and now you're nice this year? Somebody was fertile. How is it that you didn't give as much last year but you gave more this year? Somebody was fertile in the spirit. 
Because in your fertility, God says, because you're being fertile, because the ground is ready, you're now ready to produce more fruit. It's a fruit that is going to come in the season that God is calling it to come. I looked on the other side of my yard and the bush is giving me red berries. I said, God, you something. It's like Christmas in this backyard. Because when I first moved there, it wasn't yielding any of that. But all of a sudden, after two years, now I'm getting blueberries and I'm getting red berries. Don't eat them. But it's still a fruit that started to show itself. What is the fruit that God is trying to produce in you? That needs to be shown. He's looking for Christians that will be fertile. God, plant your seed in me. Whatever you want to do in me, I'm ready to produce. I have a yes inside of me. I'm ready to produce. Anybody you send in my path, I'm ready to give them the word of God. Any place that you send me, I'm ready to shine for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Youth, the, the balloon is going to do what it's going to do. Let it go. Pay attention to the word. <laughs> Praise God. Look at verse 25, same passage, Ephesians 4. Therefore, ridding yourselves of falsehood, speaking truth to speak truth to each other. Speak truth each one of you with his neighbor because we are parts of one another. Be angry and yet not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. The one who steals must steal no more, but rather he must work producing with his own hands what is good so that he will have something to share with the one who has need. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but if there is any good word for edification according to the need and the moment, say that so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. So this is the fruit. This is the stuff that gets born inside of us. When we are the good soil, this is what ends up coming up. You're like, man, Pastor Corey was so mean last year. He, he didn't grow. I don't need no amen, Samuel. But understand, God has called his disciples to look like him. That means the fruits of the Spirit. That means that is the fruit that needs to be shown. That is the fruit that needs to be born. We are no longer holding on to grievances. We're no longer letting unwholesome words come out of our mouth. We're no longer uh, holding unforgiveness. But we're growing in Him because we're good soil. Praise the Lord. Go to Colossians. And this is the last passage I'll use today. Colossians chapter 1. This is so powerful to me. Because the Apostle Paul writes this letter to the people of Colossians. People of Coloss. And in this letter, he gives such great encouragement and look at the words that he uses. He says here, starting at verse 3, We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard, there it is, since we heard of your faith, and I want you to circle faith. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and the love, I want you to circle love, 
So since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints, verse 5, because of the hope, I want you to circle hope. <laughs> because of the hope reserved for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you just as in all the world, as it is bearing fruit and increasing. Now I want you to see those three things. Faith, love, and hope. These are the three things that Paul had heard that was going on in Coloss. We heard about those three. And I wonder if that can be heard in your life. About your faith, about your love, and about your hope. That those are the fruits that are being heard about where you are. That people that are in your circles, they are people that hear and they partake of the fruit that's going on in your life. That they see the faith in Christ. That they see the love of Christ. And they see the hope of salvation. Paul said, it is being heard all over the world. I praise God because even with my life, going over to KAA, there were things that I was able to do while I was there that showed the faith, that showed the love, that showed the hope. Because everywhere we go, we need to be spreading the seed. Receiving it and spreading it. He goes on to say, starting in verse 9, check it out. For this reason... We also, since the day we heard about it, have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. This is the prayer that I want us to pray over ourselves today. I want you to take out, uh, just check out that prayer that the Apostle Paul is praying. He says, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. May we make it our prayer that I be good soil to receive his knowledge and his understanding. May we make it our prayer that we will be ever increasing in the way of God. Because there are people that need to partake of our fruit. The blessing that is happening in my backyard are those squirrels and those birds. They are reaping the benefit of the fruit in my yard. How much so about your own personal life? Who is reaping the benefit of your growth in God? Let's bow our heads. Somebody might be here today that says, I don't know Jesus. I've heard of him. But I don't know him. And you might be this person that you've heard the word and you're ready to receive it. You might be this person that says, Jesus, I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to put it all together myself. Well, I want to introduce you to Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And he's the life. I gave my life to him. 
and he's made waves. He's made a change in me. He's forgiven me of all my sins. Every single one of them. He's transformed my heart to be set aside for him. I offer you Jesus today. If you don't know him, I want you to just raise your hand so I can pray for you. Somebody that says, I want Jesus to be in my life. I'll wait. Sometimes that seed is received and there's a stirring in the heart because that seed is trying to take root. And that might be you today. That seed is trying to take root. It wants to grow. I want Jesus. That's you. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. For the rest of us, we want to be people that are good soil. I don't want to ever get to a place where the word of God is preached and I haven't received it. I don't want to be stagnant, but I want to be ever increasing. And I want to encourage you to go back and read the, the parable of the seed and the sower. Because we all need to be good soil disciples. Those disciples that will receive the seed. That will bear fruit in due season. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your people today. Father, you know where each one of us are in our relationship with you. Father, you know that sometimes we can push your seed away. Sometimes the devil will come in and, and try and steal it. Sometimes our flesh will get in the way and, and, and we just end up messing it up. And sometimes we allow the world to choke it out of us. But Father, I'm praying that we would give ourselves to you, that we would surrender the soil. Help us not to be bound up. Help us to be loosened up to receive. Lord God, I know that that means sometimes we're going to be taken through some hard things. But Father, shake up the ground. Shake up the ground, oh God. Shake up the ground, Lord, so we can receive the seed. May it take root in us and may it bear fruit. Now I say thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say, amen and amen. This word came from my devotional. And, and when I read it, I couldn't get away from it. Matthew chapter 13. I couldn't get away from it. It kept messing with me over and over and over again. And then I'd walk outside, and then I'd see all the weeds that are in there, and I'm just like, God, you're speaking to us. You want us to grow. You want us to spread. So wherever you go, spread the seed. Some of y'all going to go over to the restaurants and stuff, spread the seed. 
show kindness, show love, invite somebody with you, pay for their meal, but let's spread this good news that there's love, that there's faith, that there's hope, and it's all found in the word, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah.